All right, so what I want to do now is I want to build doors. So wherever these green guys are, these are uh, doors that, are, that have been set by our overrides over here. And if we look at our reference, um, I want to be able to support, you know, two doors or one door. So in this first um, part here, we're going to do uh, the single door and then we'll do the double doors afterwards. So let's get that all set up. So I'm going to dive into the build doors subnetwork that we built. And this one's going to be relatively simple. It's not a lot going on here, which is nice. So I'm just going to do a poly extrude first uh, to build the, the door shape. And in this case, I want the door to be flush with the, um, the entire cabinet. And so I'm going to just push this guy back a little bit and not the inset. We want to do this guy right here. Yeah. Something like that looks good. And we'll um, output the back and then we'll just reverse this guy and we can use all that information there then to um, build our little hinges and our handle for it. And I think I'm just going to reuse the, the knob over here. So what I'm going to do is go over to the drawers here and I am going to go just grab that knob that we already created. So that sub network and then dive out and then dive back into the doors, just paste it in there. So that way we have, you know, something that we can reuse. I went and reduced it a little bit as well. So cool. So now we um, have the door here. So what do we need to do now? So what I, what I need to do is I need to first place the, the knob and then I need to find the two points for the uh, hinges. And uh, to do that, uh, I'm going to do my sorting trick over here. So we're going to sort uh, by X and then I'm going to do an add node. This will give me two curves that I can then carve to get two points out of. So that's the ultimate goal here. So I'm just going to do group groups of endpoints here. And in this case, we could put in a switch to let the user decide. And I might do that off camera, but um, I'm going to walk through one of them and then I'll let you guys decide um, what, if you want to you know, add that other option. So I'm just going to uh, basically blast away um, curve one there, or primitive one. So I'm, that way I'm left with just that guy. So then I'm going to drop down a carve node. And in here, we're just going to do our equal offsets. All right, so I'm going to turn on first U and second U. We'll just paste that into there and do a one minus. Uh, you can always come in here too and just uh, save your preset. So we'll uh, save this preset as uh, equal uh, offset. There we go. We'll say save preset. That way I can get back to it. In this case, I just want to extract it. So that way I just get two points, right? So if I were to template my current door here, you can see I'm getting those two points right where the, the hinges should be and I have control over that placement, which is great. So I also need the normals uh, placed as well. So let's this time let's uh, utilize a uh, point expression node here. And in here, I'm just going to set this to normal and then just explicitly set the normal to the Z direction. So that way now I have two normals where we can place those guys. Perfect. All right. So now we got those two points all set up. Let's go and uh, create the point for the knob to be placed on. All right. And so for this, I'm going to, um, output the, uh, back here in this case, so we'll say back and I'm just going to blast away that back piece there. There we go. So that's leaves me with the front basically, right? Cause we just reversed it. And then I'm going to go up and get, from the drawers here, I'm going to go get that uh, wrangle node that creates the point. We should probably name this. So we'll call this uh, knob point. There we go. I'm just going to copy that. Oh, we don't have to do it again. There's no reason to write it again, unless you're just, you know, practicing. There we go. So that gives me my uh, point there. So let's make sure that's in the right spot. So we're going to have to do something a little bit extra with this one. All right. And so, I want to basically, I don't need it right in the center. I need it right over here. And so to do that, I need to get the box max size or the BB box max size. So in VEX, uh, I'm going to create a new variable called box max, and we're going to get the uh, BB box max from the incoming geometry. So zero. 
And then I'm going to create a, an offset value so we have control over where it goes. So that's going to be a float channel, and I'm just going to call it offset. There we go. Cool. So let's give it a little bit of value there. All right. And then now what we need to do is create the position where we want to create this new point. Currently, we're using at P, right? And in the primitive context, that means the center of the current primitive that we're working on. So we want something that's offset a little bit. And so I need to build up my own vector. So I'm going to do a vector pause for the variable name. And then we're going to do a set because we are going to explicitly set the position. And I'm going to say box max dot X minus our offset value. And then we'll use at P dot Y and at P dot Z. There we go. So rather than the at P for the add point function here, I'm going to use pause. And this allows me then to place that point where that knob should go. Beautiful. And then we need to, uh, well, we're already removing the prim, so yeah, we're all good. So all we have to do now is copy to points. So great way to reuse all of our stuff that we've already done. And we need a transform node. So let's do a transform like so. And uh, we'll just scale this down. It's way too big so far. Let's turn off our normal display and our primitive display. Let's scale this down even more. Yeah. Cool. So now we got that all set up. Let's uh, merge the two together. And then the last thing we really need to do is build our hinges and make sure they're all uh, UV'd and good to go. We also need to UV this guy here. So let's go and get one of our uh, box mapping utilities and just paste that in here. Just make sure everything is golden. Looks good. All right. Cool. So now we've got UVs for everything. Awesome. You know, uh, we'll probably do something special in the shader for the knob itself, just so that we don't get any stretching. Uh, so that's why I'm leaving it the way <clears throat> it is. All right, so let's focus on these um, hinges over here. So what I'm gonna do is uh, create a new subnet, I think, because we're gonna need to reuse this as well. So we'll call this the hinge, like so. And I'm gonna start this up with a grid. All right, so let's dive inside of our hinge node here and uh, let's get some stuff going. So I'm going to do a shift L just to organize these guys. Uh, we don't need any actual incoming geometry, so that doesn't need to be hooked up. All right, so uh, what I'm going to do is create a grid and this is just going to be a unit grid. So let's zoom in here and I'm just going to do uh, one and one and two and two. Put this on the X, Y plane like so. And then I'm going to put a transform node down here, and this is going to allow me to then scale it downwards, right? Cause I don't want that full size. I just want to do something like this for the hinge size there. All right. And then <clears throat> what I'm going to do is drop down a group node and I'm going to call this group a orange for original points. Basically let's group all of our points. The reason why I'm doing that is cause I want to poly bevel these, but I also want to split this right down the middle first. So I'm going to use a clip to do that particular function. So let's clip it. Let's clip it on the X direction. All right. And put this back to zero and we're going to keep all primitives. And so what's happening now is we have, you know, a new segment right down the middle, which is great. Um, and it fuses it and everything for us. So now that, um, I got that split in the middle, I can go and poly bevel those points because those original points, uh, groups are stored. And so I can do a uh, poly bevel now and uh, make sure I save my scene here and we'll just poly bevel those particular ridge points and uh, let's do it on points there. There we go. Cool. Another thing we could do too, I want to give this a little bit more shape. Let's uh, transform those ridge points. So transform node and then let's just scale them down in Y do something like that. Cool. And then, yeah, let's give this like another division in there. It's like two. Yeah, it looks good. All right. So, uh, with that all done, I think we're pretty much good to go. Uh, let's reverse this now just so it's facing forward. Let's turn off our point numbers and let's go now and do a poly extrude. So I'm going to do poly extrude and we'll just pop this out just a little bit. It doesn't need 
very much. Maybe we inset it as well, just a little bit. So it catches the light nicely. Uh, and then on this poly extrude, let's go and um, output the extrude front seam. I want to UV this. And so I'm going to need that front seam. So that front seam is the uh, seam around that whole front face like so. So that's going to come in handy here because I'm going to drop down a group node now. And in this group node, I'm going to call it seams and turn off the base group. We're going to set it to edges. I'm going to say include by edges. And we're going to do this uh, min edge angle. And Tony actually works out pretty well for this. It splits it nicely. Those are perfect seams for this particular object. But I don't want to uh, separate off the front face when we do a UV flatten node. So we can use a group combine node now. So if I do a group combine, like so, I'm going to say seams is equal to seams, the current seams. All right, so we get that. But we also want to subtract away our extrude front seam, so we're left with just these guys. So now if I feed this into a UV flatten node, like so, and just put in the seams for the flattening constraints there, you can see we get perfect UVs. Yeah, nice. All right, so now that we've got that, so that's one portion. Now we need the actual uh, cylindrical hinge portion here. Uh, and so to do that, I'm going to start with a tube, basically. So let's drop down the tube here, like so. And uh, we're going to set it to polygon. I'm not going to put caps on this because I do want to UV it, and I want control over the cap UVs. Uh, but what we do need to do, let's template our current uh, hinge. We need to make sure that we bring this down in size here. And then let's set the uh, height to 0.5. Or we, what we could do here, because we scaled this down, we could actually get this value right here. So that's going to, well, we could also just get the total height from this guy. So let's do that. So let's do a BB box. And we want to get it from our UV flatten. And we want to get the DY size. Oops. I did the wrong one. Let's just copy this and paste in for the height. There we go. And then let's remove this. So to remove it, you do control shift and then left click and then just click on the label to see the values. There we go. So now we're perfect. So we might want to um, add on maybe just a little bit. So plus 0 0.1 or maybe 0 0.05. Yeah, there you go. Cool. So usually these hinges have another little cylinder in the middle. I'm not going to, you know, go and make a super realistic one. Uh, this is all stylized stuff anyways. So to do that, um, I'm going to uh, do a transform here like so, and I'm just going to scale this down just a little bit. All right. So if I were to template this and then I'm, I'm going to copy the X scale here and just drag and drop it over here and do a relative reference. And then I'm just going to make it just a little bit bigger. So we get our um, X Z scaling going on there, which is great. Uh, the other thing that we should do here, since we do need UVs, I'm going to do a UV project. So let's do UV project here. And we're going to set this to uh, cylindrical like so. All right. So we get some cylindrical UVs. We'll just pass that into this guy over here um, because it's the same. So it'll just use those same UVs basically. All right. So with that done, now we've got UVs on this, these two guys. Let's do some uh, polycap action. All right, so I'm going to do a polycap like so, and then a polycap over here. So that caps it, and uh, we can put on this patch group. So let's do the same for this guy, and then let's uh, merge these two guys together. And then I'm going to do a UV unwrap here, and we're just going to UV unwrap that patch group. So if we go to our UVs now, we have our cylindrical mapping and our, our patches are all um, UV mapped as well, which is great. But uh, the problem here, and it's not really a problem per se, uh, these this these are just two tubes, you know, shoved together. Uh, you can actually drop down a Boolean node like so and just populate that first input. And uh, what will happen if we put this on a union, those union those two guys together, right? So now we have a watertight mesh. Pretty cool. And uh, it, it does a pretty good job with the UVs as well. All right. So now we have the UVs for it. So with that, I'm going to save the scene and also drop down a poly bevel node. 
And uh, I am just going to polybevel everything and then use this exclu exclusions to prevent it from polybeveling too much. Or those edges that are shouldn't be really polybeveled at all. There we go. Yeah, so it's something like that, just so it catches the light a little bit. Cool. So now let's take a look uh, where we're at. Um, you can see that our uh, hinge cylinder isn't uh, positioned properly. So let's just use a match size and uh, let's do a min justify Z. Yeah, and that'll place it perfectly. So that looks pretty good. All right, so let's uh, merge these two guys together. There we go. And then we'll merge this one back together here. Perfect. There we go. So now we have a hinge. Uh, let's poly bevel uh, the uh, hinge plate as well. There we go. And uh, let's turn off that templating. All right. Uh, again, always save your scene right before using a poly bevel. I noticed in Houdini 18 and above, it does tend to crash. And that will just uh, do that. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Great. So now we, we have uh, a, sh a hinge so far. Uh, it would be kind of nice to actually put on some bolts, but um, I'll let you guys do that. And I'll probably add it on later, but off, uh, off uh, video. So let's do a copy to points here. And let's just copy our hinge now to our two points that we created. And let's create a transform. Note so we can scale down our hinges because they are way too big right now. And to get reference, let's template this here. Yeah, let's make these pretty tiny. You can even uh, scale them up a little bit here. Yeah. Cool. All right. So that is that. Let's merge all of it together now. And uh, there we go. We have a door now. All right, that's coming together. It looks like we need to make our hinges really tiny. <laughs> so uh, this is a great way to do this. Just uh, pin your scene view and then you can dive back in. So that way you don't lose your view and you can dive all the way into this guy and uh, really dial in the sizes of these. Yeah, so they have to be tiny, but we'll just scale them all the way up then. Do something like that. And that really is dependent on this uh, thickness value here. Yep. Could scale it up a little bit more. Cool. There we go. So now we've got doors and, and uh, drawers, doors and drawers. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to close the video out there. And um, in the next video, we're going to concentrate on making the double door, which we're just going to reuse a lot of work that we just did uh, and turn this into a double door. Okay. Thanks so much.